Hello, I'm going to attempt to try to explain the differences between a full electric car, which is what you see here, Ford Focus Electric um, BEV, battery electric vehicle, and a plug-in hybrid car. This is the Ford C-Max Energy. Um, they call them PHEV, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Um, try to explain the differences because people out there might be interested in going electric. Um, but they're not sure if electric's for them, and um, and if so, what kind of electric would they like to get? So, uh, I try to help here with this video. So, what's really the difference? Well, uh, let's see. This plug-in, this fully electric BEV, the Ford Focus you see right here, that's an all-electric car. It has a battery and a motor and electronics, and the the, the only method of propulsion is that electric motor. <clears throat> if the battery is dead car is not going to move. When the battery uh, charge is low, you have to plug it in to charge it back up. Plug-in hybrid. It does have a battery. The battery is in the trunk, but, and it has a plug, which you see here. So there's an engine, on, engine under the hood. So it has an engine here on the left. And then down below, well, there's some electronics here on the right, and then down below where the transaxle would be, um, it is still a transaxle, and there is a transmission down there. It's a continuously variable transmission. It has two electric motors in there, a large one and a small one. And the two electric motors work with a planetary gear set, and it's a, a very clever piece of engineering, and it gives you a variable transmission. So this vehicle can run in full EV mode, or it can run in with the engine and the EV, so in hybrid mode. So it's a kind of a combination of the two. It can be a plug-in. It can be a plug-in electric vehicle. So uh, you can have an electric vehicle, and it is possible to drive these cars without using any ga any gasoline. But you're not going to drive it very far. Typically, a plug-in hybrid vehicle PHEV like the C-Max here. This uh, specs on the C-Max would go, get you about 20 miles of range on a charge. So it has a 7.5 kilowatt battery hour, hour battery, 7.5 kilowatt hour battery. Um, gives you about 20 miles of range in this type of vehicle. This is kind of a larger vehicle. So it's a heavier than the Focus. Uh, and it's going to get about 4 miles per kilowatt. So when people talk about miles per gallon, um, in these cars, if you're using electricity, we can measure kilowatt. So about four miles per kilowatt, the Focus Electric is going to get about five miles per kilowatt. So about 20% more efficient. Um, but, you know, it's a smaller car and it weighs less because um, it's a smaller car. It also weighs less because it is electric. So it doesn't have a gasoline engine on board, doesn't have um, the extra things that come along with a gasoline engine, like a larger radiator, a bunch of fluids and a fuel tank. Um, full of fuel so it saves energy there and it's also lighter because it doesn't have as much insulation and it doesn't have maybe this focus doesn't have um a, like a like a as good a stereo system the this the stereo system in the c-max jams it's got a nice big subwoofer and it kicks it um, the electric not so much the focus electric it's got a decent stereo system but it's not really going to rock your world i think the reason why is if ford puts a you know, kind of a kick butt stereo system in the car, it's going to draw a lot of energy, a lot of electricity, and it's going to, you know, run your miles down. So there's a compromise when you're going full electric, or at least in this model, there is. So this car is plugged in and it's charging right now. It's on a level two charger. So what you want to decide, first thing you want to decide about which one of these cars is good for you is you need to know how you're going to charge the car. So plug-in hybrids uh, could charge one of two ways. They can, they both plug in to charge. Um, well, I guess there's three ways. There's two ways on the plug, and there's a third way it could charge just by driving it around, but that, that's not really the ideal, the idea with these cars. The idea with these cars is you're supposed to plug it in, and then if you have short trips, you can drive with that on the battery, and you may never need the gasoline engine. So this car gets 20 miles of range, um, my wife drives it daily. Um, her distance, her average trip to work is two and a half miles, and so she does five miles round trip. 
she'll make it to work and back. And then she can go later to, if she doesn't plug it in when she gets home from work, she can make it to pick up the kids from school and back. And she can also go to the grocery store and back all within that 20 miles and she would never use the gasoline engine. <clears throat> so she, it's not uncommon for her to drive Monday through Friday and the gasoline engine never come on at all. Um, but she has range anxiety and she didn't want to give up her gasoline powered car in favor of a straight electric. So this is a good compromise for her because she wanted to have the opportunity or the ability to go further, um, especially to take a trip um, to visit her parents, which live 120 miles away. So this car does that. She doesn't have to worry about, um, you know, does it have enough charge? Is it with, with the onboard battery and the fuel tank, it gets about 475 miles of range. So she can easily just take off and go out of town and see her parents or come back and there's no problem with that on the charge and you, you don't really have to charge it um, when you're at when you're out of town you can just drive it straight on battery on electric i'm sorry on gasoline so that's the benefit you have is if you take a longer trips and you don't want to worry about um, fast charging or planning your trip around the charge events then you can take a plug-in hybrid and and uh, drive it during the week most times, like the Chevrolet Volt, it has about a 50 mile of range. So most people can get to work and back with that uh, range. So um, I guess the best way to describe a plug-in hybrid is uh, it can be a EV during the week. And then on the weekend, it can be a, a regular um, gasoline powered car for longer trips. So um, typically, with you get a plug-in hybrid, you're gonna get a larger vehicle, which is something my wife also wanted because you know, she, she carries the kids and she carries things in the back and she just likes a little bit larger car. Um, for this one, um, for this electric car, uh, it's just me driving to work and I drive about 21 miles each way. Um, so when it's only me and I usually don't carry passengers and during the weekend we take her car most places. So this uh, Focus is really a Monday through Friday car and during the weekends I hardly ever use it. Um, so in that scenario, the electric works totally fine for me. So I wanted to get back to which one works for you. Well, let's talk about charging. So you have, you have level one charging and you have level two. Now the charger is on the car. So depending on how big the charger is on your car that you've selected is gonna determine how, how long it takes to charge up. So the Focus Electric has a 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger. It can take a level one, which is the, which is 120 volt right there, and then a level two, which is 240 volts, and it can take a DC to DC fast charge. And the C-Max can also do level one, and it can also do level two, but there is no DC fast charge. So level one charger is like what you see here on the ground, and I keep saying charger, but it's, it's not actually a charger. It is a, a power supply. Remember, the charger is in the car. So this is a level one power supply and it plugs into a regular 120 volt plug that you normally used to seeing. And then it has the other end that goes into the car and there's three large pins and two smaller pins. So in this scenario for this power supply, only uh, one of those larger pins really is used. The other one is just, um, it's a common. The two smaller pins, one's a proximity sensor and one's a data connector. So when you plug this into the wall and then the other end into the car, there's a communication event that happens. And this power supply communicates with the onboard charger of the car and they determine how much power is available and how much power the car can handle. And then it makes a determination on what the charging speed's gonna be. So I currently have this uh, C-Max plugged into a level two charger. So this level two charger runs over here and I have it mounted on, next, on a box on my wall. And there you go. It's a power supply as well. I, again, I keep calling it a charger. Sorry about that. It's not really a charger. It's a power supply. It's called an EVSE, Electrical Vehicle Service Equipment. It's wired right into my breaker panel. And this box is able to provide up to 30 amps for two uh, lines, two hot legs. So um, Right now, it's providing about 16 amps for two hot legs because that's all the C-Max can take. If I were to have it plugged into the Focus, and the Focus needed a charge, 
it would it could provide up to 32 amps for each leg. So what that means is um, that that determines how fast it's going to charge. So you're looking for electric vehicle, and you do not want to or are not able to have a 240 volt service at your at your house or where you live or where you park. Then a plug-in hybrid might work for you because most places can figure out how to get the 120 volts um, because you can just use the standard um, level one. And most plug-in hybrid batteries um, can charge up uh, relatively quickly. So um, it's based on capacity. So we'll talk about these two cars. What are the charging speeds? So um, first thing everybody asks when they do these cars is how far do the cars go? on a charge and then the second question they ask is how long does it take to charge up so uh, how far do they go well, this uh, this Ford Focus can travel on a full charge uh, I've seen as much as 160 miles of range uh, on my display um, I've gotten as much as 130 out of it uh, before it was uh, in the single digits on the charge that's not normal. Um, I think the average is going to be somewhere around 115 and 120 for most drivers. And uh, then it's going to need to be recharged. The C-Max has a much smaller battery than the Focus Electric. Because remember, it has the gasoline engine on board. So it has a 7.5 kilowatt hour battery, which gives this car about a 20 miles of range. Um, not a lot of range. Again, that's a compromise you make. There's a smaller battery. But also, it's a much heavier car. It's a little larger. And it, you are carrying around that gasoline engine and the, fuel, and the tank of fuel that a, a regular electric car would not be carrying around. So, um, again, it's a compromise we chose uh, for my wife because she wanted to have the ability to use gas when she needed it. So, um, to, if she fully depleted that 20 miles of range, or if this Focus drove 20 miles, we can figure out how long it's going to take to charge back up. So, in the plug-in hybrid... Uh, if you wanted to buy one of those for yourself and it had, if it was a C-Max and it had a 3.5 kilowatt charger on board, uh, then if you plug it into the level 1, which is 120 volts, then it's going to charge about 4 miles of range per hour. So if you depleted that battery, which is 20 miles of range, then you're going to plug it into that charger and it's going to take about 5 hours to charge back up. So really overnight um, or during dinner or whatever, remember these cars charge at home most times. You don't have to take them to a charging place. Um, although there are public chargers, but for the sake of this talk, I'll just, I'm going to assume you're going to plug your car in at home when you get done for your travels for the day. So really, um, a plug-in hybrid can work for a lot of people because you can you can still have uh, no range anxiety. You can still be electric. You know, you can be electric during the week, and you can plug in that um, take five hours of charge while you're sleeping or while you're having dinner. That really could work, and honestly, for my wife, it works really good. Um, she uses the level two charger most often because it's most convenient for her to use because it happens to be right here, quick service. Also, you do get a benefit with a level two because you have a little more power on tap, and that can help make the difference on things like when it's winter time and you want to preheat the car. A level two can do it quicker and faster, so the car is warmer. And then, opposite in the summer. If it's pretty hot in the summer, 110 degrees outside or whatever, and you want to cool the car down to 82, uh, that level one charger is going to struggle to do that. There's not enough amps in the line to really run that compressor that's on board very well. So the level two does have um, a better chance of doing that because it's double the amps. So the level two charger uh, that it's plugged into right now would take about 11 miles of range in an hour. So um, this car is actually charging right now. I just finished driving it and the battery pack is inside and it's in this cargo area here and you can see where the battery is that nine inch space there is the battery sitting in the passenger compartment and so it's not ideal um, it takes up a lot of uh, space again that's the compromise we make or the penalty we pay for trying to be a hybrid at the moment because this car wasn't designed to be an electric car, it was designed to be a gas car, and they, they've kind of made it into a, a hybrid. So um, in a fully designed electric vehicle, that battery could be placed somewhere else, like on the floor, and then you can have your cargo space back like some other manufacturers. There is some cooling. If I put my hand here, I can feel the warm air coming out because um, there's a fan running right now. This fan uh, takes air and circulates it through these vents. There's more vents here on this side. And there's also an air intake 
down here in the wheel well. Kind of can hear it maybe. So it's charging the battery and it's, and it's keeping it cool by blowing air around it. So this is an air cooled battery on this particular car because it's a pretty small battery. The Focus on the other hand has a much larger battery. So when it's charging and needs to be cooled, it has liquid cooling. So it'll run uh, the liquid through a chiller, AC chiller, AC line will run, run through a chiller and it'll, it'll uh, keep the, the fluid cool. So this car will be charged up in an hour because it was about uh, 12, hour, 12 miles of range is what we consumed on our most recent trip. We went to the store, we went to uh, shopping, we went to three stores and we went to have dinner or lunch. So we used about 12 miles on that trip. So it'll charge back up in about an hour. If I would have done the same trip in the Focus Electric, it's a level one charger. Uh, again, charges about four miles of range per hour. The level two is about 22, which is twice what the C-Max is. And that's because it has a 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger on board. So, so if we'd have taken the same trip in this Ford Focus, and I would have wanted to recharge it back up with that level two plug that you see over there, that would have charged back up in 30 minutes. So again, the charger is in the car, and these, these power cords are just the power supply. So um, if you have the ability to, to plug in or to install a 240 volt charger or power supply at your house or where you park, then an electric vehicle can make a lot of sense for you. Um, and then you can just purchase one that has uh, the right, appropriate amount of range. Now this, this focus is on the lower end of what most manufacturers offer. This uh, 33 kilowatt hour battery uh, gives this car um, somewhere around 120 to 130 real world mile range is the way I use it. For me, that's fine. But if we wanted to take it to visit my wife's uh, parents, uh, it'd make it one way. And then I'd have a problem when I'm there because uh, in the Tucson where they live, uh, they don't have a, a place for me to charge up. I could charge with level one, but to replenish uh, 120 miles of range would take somewhere around uh, 12 hours, I think. Let me see, 10 hours would be 40. Uh, take 30 hours to charge up with that. And that's just too long. So I would need the level two, which would, uh, which would get me my um, range back. Or I could plug it into a DC fast charge, which will give me um, about 75 um, miles of, of range in about 30 minutes-ish, I think is what it works out to. It kind of just depends. Um, the specs say 90 miles of range and an hour worth of charge on the DC fast charge, but um, I don't think I could run at the full speed for that full minute. And the DC fast charge really only goes up to about an 80% state of charge anyway. So, um, but I could charge in Tucson with a DC fast charge and then I could get enough energy to make it back to where I live, which is the Phoenix area. And then uh, I can make it back home and then charge up at home. So I could use the Focus Electric to go to Tucson, but I'd rather use the C-Max because it's, a, it's more convenient since I don't have to worry about charging when I'm there. Um, so there's some, there's some things there to think about. Um, there's some other numbers you're going to talk about, which is MPGE is what you're going to hear about a lot when people talk about it. And that's just really how efficient the car is when it's in electric mode. Um, you know, anything over, most electrics have over 100 MPGE now. Um, this, uh, the Focus has over 107 MPGE. The C-Max uh, only 88. So what that means basically is when it's on electric mode, um, it can get a certain amount of miles per each kilowatt. So it's about 100, um, 100 miles of range or 100 EP, MPGE equivalent is kind of equivalent to about five miles per kilowatt hour. Um, the 81 or 80 is, is equivalent to about four. So um, this focus can go about 20% further than the C-Max could for the same amount of electrical energy. Um, but keep in mind, they're different cars. So this Focus is designed to be only electric, and the C-Max is designed to be both, so there's a compromise. Not as efficient as in electric mode as a fully electric car, but still, still more efficient than a gasoline car ever could be. So um, it, is, it could be a good compromise for you. Um, so I think I would say if you're looking... Um, 
if you're looking to go electric, uh, there's definitely some good choices for you out there. Some A good used plug-in hybrid could be a good entry level to see if it works for you because you're not going to have to look at an expensive outlay for a power supply at your house. You can use the 110 volt. This kind of charger right here on the floor would be totally fine for most plug-in hybrid users. Uh, just make sure you have a good dedicated outlet uh, in your garage or wherever you park. That'll do. That'll uh, charge that car up, especially if your daily driving is in the 20 or 30 miles of range per day. Then your Monday through Friday, depending on which car you pick, could really work for you. Um, and you'd hardly ever use that um, gasoline power engine. Our average fuel economy on this C Max is about 88 and a half miles per gallon. Um, because of the mix that we use for what our mix is for EV versus gas and that you know we take pretty regular trips down to Tucson um, this Focus Electric um, I, can, I drive it back and forth to work and uh, that's a 40 mile round trip 42 mile round trip so if you look at the electric car straight out of electric that's a good comparison between the Focus and the fo uh, internal combustion and the Focus Electric because they're the same basic car so in the eternal in the eternal combustion version of the Focus, it gets about nine uh, it costs about nine cents per mile to drive it. That's if gasoline is two dollars and eighty six cents a gallon. Uh, for the for the electric version, which I have here, it costs about four cents per mile at standard utility rates. So it's about half the cost to operate the vehicle. Um, but if you charge it during off-peak, which I do, uh, my utility company gives me off-peak rates, then um, my, it costs me about two cents, a little less than two cents per mile to operate the car. So in that 40 mile trip that I make to work and back, I'm spending about 20 cents, like 19 cents I think is what it is to get to work and back, which is much cheaper than if I was using a gasoline powered version of this very same car. So there is some financial sense, uh, makes some sense to use it for certain situations. Um, it does what I need it to do, so I'm fine. I do not need the longer range. 130 miles is fine for me. Uh, a Chevrolet Bolt has about twice the range as this Ford Focus. Um, but if, it, if I owned a Bolt, then I would be using at most 50% uh, of its battery capacity. Usually I'd be in a 30% range. So I'd be carrying around extra battery weight that I would just never really use. So for me, it it's just doesn't make sense to buy a Bolt uh, because I don't need the extra range. But if you're one of those people that you feel like you need a longer range, then certainly get a, a car that would have the right kind of range if you want to go fully electric. Um, so the other thing to mention is you can go fully electric even if you do not have a way to plug in at home. Um, you would want to have a BEV, which has a pretty long range, like a 250 miles or more, 350 probably be even better, because then you can DC fast charge once a week or so, and, um, and then you can drive your car during the week and, and just charge you know, every three, four days or five days. So that can work. Um, so hopefully some of this information um, helps you. What I'll do is this will be like part one, hopefully, of uh, this video or a series. I'll try to do a, a drive test of what it's like to drive in the plug-in hybrid versus the electric version. They pretty much drive the same. Um, I'm going to say this Focus Electric is a little peppier, and it's a little nicer, I think, because it's newer. Um, the C-Max, though, is a little more luxurious. It's a little bigger, a little more room, a little taller. The stereo sounds better, the road noise is a lot less because it has a lot more insulation, and um, it just it's a little bit nicer with the controls and the features and stuff inside. It is an older car, but it does ride nicer, and it's a little more comfortable. Uh, and again, a little more room, for, even with the, with the penalty of the battery, I still have more, more cargo capacity in the C-Max than I do in the Focus, and that is strictly down to, because Ford was took the easy way out and they put the battery in the passenger in the in this um, cargo compartment on both vehicles so um, if you have any questions between the two uh, hopefully this, make a post them below I'll try to answer but if you're looking for to go electric and you're not sure what the differences are uh, here's a couple choices um, 
you don't have to use Ford, of course. Most all the manufacturers are offering a plug-in hybrid version. Uh, if they don't have it now, they're coming out with it soon. And there are quite a few electric car choices as well. So um, you can just compare the two and see which works for you. So hope you found this helpful.